We have perhaps heard the pious saying, perhaps heard it many times, that God permits evil in order to later draw out a greater good. Such a saying may seem cold comfort to us when we might be in the throes of a certain affliction, a certain evil that we have to suffer. And probably that's especially when we might have heard such a saying, perhaps from someone who was trying to comfort us in the midst of a great suffering or a prolonged suffering, or any kind of suffering for that matter. It seems called comfort to us because in the midst of the evil that we suffer, the good that might be drawn out of the evil is not so apparent. So it is important for us to reflect upon the life of our Lord because our Lord did not permit any evil to befall him except in so far as he knew that he himself would draw a greater good out of it and not simply for himself but for all of mankind. And so over and over again in the Gospel of St. John from which the Gospel today is taken, we see the evangelist taking pains to point out that our Lord by his own volition, by his own choice, permitted certain evils to befall him. And we may not simply say certain evils, but rather grievous evils. After all, the passion and death of our Lord is the greatest evil that can befall anyone because our Lord was completely innocent and he allowed himself to permit the greatest atrocities uh, atrocities to be committed against him. But all through the course of his public ministry, this was the case. He faced serious opposition and uh, various attempts on his life were made. Various things were said about him, as for example, when uh, he was in the temple, as is related here in uh, chapter 7 of John's Gospel. How many times have we had And with regard to our own person, one person say something about us and one person say another thing. So he has the crowd to whom he's preaching in the temple all having their various opinions about who he happens to be and not very good opinions, we might point out. And then, of course, we had the authorities who had their own opinions and were ready to arrest Jesus. But Jesus did not permit them to arrest him because it was not his time as it is said elsewhere, i.e., he did not permit that certain evil to befall him because he had something else in mind, another occasion for another evil to befall him so that a greater good could be drawn, that he could draw the greater good, not that a greater good could be drawn from any, by means of any particular source, but from himself. So he's the one who is the source of all goodness, and he's the one who draws goodness, therefore, because the goodness comes from himself. And he knows not only how to draw any good out of any particular situation, but the greatest good, because he is the greatest good. Another way to say this, then, is that when we find ourselves in the midst of pain and suffering, if we wish to realize the greatest good that Jesus which is to draw out of that situation, we need to fix our eyes on Jesus because he is the greatest good. So when we're in the midst of pain and suffering, we're saying we ought to be mindful of drawing Jesus out of that pain and suffering that we are going through. If we aren't mindful of that, we won't draw the greatest good that Jesus wants us to draw. See, that's what our Lord intends. That's why he permits us to undergo. And he, in the end, calls the shots. He permits. He directs. So if the greatest good is not drawn out of a painful situation, how is this possible? Is it not because we ourselves place the obstacle? We ourselves do not fix our eyes on Jesus and look to let him draw himself, as it were, out 
of this great evil. In the end, we know that this will happen because of what? The greatest evil that could befall anyone, namely the passion and death of our Lord, resulted in the resurrection of our Lord. And he will effect this in our own lives as well, if we permit him to, but only if we are willing to share in this permission of an evil befalling us. And can any one of us here claim that in our lives we've had more to suffer, more pain to undergo than our Lord? We wish to imagine that this is the case at times, but that is only because we haven't meditated sufficiently on the life of our Lord. And that's why, as I, to return to the point I said at the beginning, this sort of gospel passage is precisely an invitation to meditate upon the life and particularly the passion of our Lord, as we Christians are so often invited to do so during the season of Lent. Now, the goodness of our Lord passes through the heart of one particular individual. Today we celebrate the first Saturday of the month, and so we have in mind, of course, the Immaculate Heart of Mary. In her heart, she shared all the bitterness of the pain and suffering of our Lord in this life. She was one with our Lord, so to speak in sharing everything that he underwent, every affront that he suffered, every attempt on his life, she felt these things. She suffered all these things in their fullness. And in so uh, being united to our Lord, she permitted the goodness of the Lord to fill her heart entirely. Now, as a matter of fact, the goodness of the Lord filled her heart from the first moment of her conception. She always had the goodness of the Lord in her heart. But her heart, as it were, continued to expand and uh, permitting herself to share the sufferings of our Lord, her heart expanded to uh, allow the goodness of the Lord to fill it, to widen that heart evermore. But her heart did not receive the goodness of the Lord for herself only. You see, the goodness of the Lord is to pass through her heart into our hearts. And our Lord wants to reflect upon this heart and realize that if we keep this woman company, as he recommended, highly recommended that we do with regard to the events of Fatima, that we will receive every goodness not simply in order to uh, wait until we come into that goodness, as it were, until all the evils of this life pass, but that in the here and now, in the midst of trial and temptation and suffering and pain, that we'll have everything that we need, joy included, to sustain ourselves in the suffering, just as our Lord sustained himself in the midst of all the trials and tribulations he faced. And no longer will we then be tempted to uh, give it all up, i.e. to uh, to take another route, as if we could find another route that is alternative to our Lord. That we will bear all things because we will have the joy of the Lord and because we will know that's what he wants of us, that's what he expects of us. And in so doing, we will store up a joy that is far greater than if we refused the pain and suffering that our Lord wants us to bear in the first place. See, our Lord wishes to uh, allow us a greater share in his suffering so that we will have a greater share in his joy. And we will come to realize this precisely by contemplating the heart of Mary, how generous she was in sharing in the sufferings of our Lord. She wanted, if she could suffer more, if she could be even more closely united to our Lord than she actually was in this life, she would have willingly done so. She would have willingly united herself ever more closely. But she already was as closely united as possible to our Lord. And she can teach us also to be generous, 
to be generous in uh, allowing afflictions to befall us, in enduring and sustaining pain and suffering. Not that we do these things in themselves. Nobody, nobody, unless they are of a perverted mind, prefer to undergo pain and suffering for its own sake. We don't, we're not, we don't like to undergo pain and suffering for its own sake. We're not gluttons for punishment, as the saying goes. That's not what we mean here. What we mean is we do these things for our Lord because He is goodness. Our eyes are fixed totally on Him and we know that whatever He allows to happen, not, that what, not what we bring upon ourselves, but what He permits to be brought upon us, that is what Our Lady will help us to endure, to be joyful in the midst of. And that's why we honor the Immaculate Heart the way that we do. Why our Lord recommended that we have a great devotion to this Immaculate Heart. Why the first Saturday devotions are so powerful. And so let us turn to our Blessed Lady, mindful of the great goodness that is stored up in her heart. And let us beg her to open our hearts that enduring whatever suffering that we may have to, have to undergo, that our hearts open to all, that we will also receive the goodness of the Lord, which stored up in our heart will then pass into ours. Praise be Jesus and Mary. <laughs>